Three weeks from tonight, I will be traveling to Pongyang, North Korea, to interview President Kim Jong Un. Mr. Rappaport, I am Agent Lacey with Central Intelligence. You two are going to be in a room alone with Kim, and the CIA would love it if you could take him out. <laughs> the trailer looks pretty good. Would Seth Rogen's latest comedy feature have received nearly as much attention had Sony not been brought to its knees by a crippling hack attack? Turn off your cell phones as we dive into the hits and misses in Hollywood. Welcome to Midpoint. New York Times bestselling author, media analyst, law professor, and the person behind the Left Coast Report at Newsmax.com. It's James Hurston. Hi, James. How you doing? Hey, good morning. Happy New Year's Eve. Happy New Year's Eve to you. So much to get to. Let's get right into it. The so-called Guardians of Peace, the group that took credit for the Sony hacking, Looks like they're now going after CNN. There's an FBI bulletin that says the hackers have posted threats against a news organization. And then the FBI bulletin specifically mentions CNN. What do you think? What's going on with all these hackers going after Sony? And now it looks like CNN. Yeah, and we still don't know whether the Guardians of Peace are an independent hacking group or they're part of North Korea. We don't really know that yet, but it makes sense. Because either way, you know, they're going after the entertainment media. Why not go after the news media? It just it just makes sense to me. If North Korea is behind it, they've, uh, in their statements, have attacked the media. So it, it, it would fit with the MO. And it just underscores um, that we need both defense and offense when it comes to cyber warfare, because that's what it is, this is. And the government today is looking for talented computer people uh -huh. to put together uh, what I call a geek army. And I think that's a great thing. And we have the most talented computer people in the world in this country. We sure do. It'll be interesting to see what kind of geek army we can come up with. Let's go back to the movie, The Interview. Uh, cost 44 million to make. So far, they've made about 20 million dollars. But you know, there's some people that's saying that Sony really is benefiting from what happened as far as the hacking scandal is concerned. What do you think? Well, they, it could be, it remains to be seen, because they've been forced into a new business model. I mean, it's not like this hasn't been done before, but it hasn't been widespread, mostly because the big theater chains have fought tooth and nail the idea of a simultaneous release. In other words, it comes out in theaters and online at the same time, and Sony was forced into doing that and has done quite well. As a matter of fact, uh, I think of that 20 million, roughly 15 million came from online sales. They are, the interview is the number one downloaded uh, movie on YouTube, on Google Play, on virtually every platform it's on. And the film itself is more like a, maybe a hangover sequel. It's not a serious film by any stretch. It's a typical Seth Rogen film, but they do very well. And so in the long run, it, it may end up, I mean, Sony will be in ecstasy if they can break even on this one <laughs> after all they've endured. Yeah, you're right. And is this the model for the future? We'll have to wait and see on that. Uh, you wrote a really interesting piece. And, you know, the GOP had big victories in November, but you're saying that maybe Hollywood try to thwart that GOP midterm victory. Tell us a little bit about what that's all about. Well, look, Hollywood as a community, in terms of their uh, belief system, if you will, uh, they live in a bubble, they're out of touch. And the one thing, the one message, similar to the elections, that the public sent through the box office is that is what kind of film fare the public wants. And out of the top 10 films that Hollywood produced, uh, first of all, the box office was down 5%. This in spite of ticket prices that go up due to 3D and luxury theaters and things like that. Um, so that's a big deal that the box office is down. But the bulk of the money came from these top 10 films. There's not a single R-rated film in the bunch. And as Michael Medved pointed out decades ago, Hollywood makes more R-rated films than they do uh, PG and PG-13. And yet... It's the family-oriented films that pay for Hollywood. And this proves it again. 2014 numbers prove it again. There's three PG films. The rest are PG-13. And Guardians of the Galaxy, the number one film, both in the minds of critics and audiences, is a pretty family-friendly, fun 
film that a lot of different age groups can go to see. The other lesson Hollywood learned is don't insult people of faith. And they did that with two films that should have been blockbusters, but instead were disappointing. All the right. most recent... I'm going to stop you right there because I want to talk to you more about the movies. In fact, talking about a Clint Eastwood movie, The American Sniper, straight ahead with James Hurst. He's going to stick around for another segment right here on Midpoint on a Wednesday afternoon.